to the last session of, of uh, the HOT UF workshop. And uh, we are going to hear now uh, Maximilian Doré. Uh, he will talk us about uh, simplicial complexes in homotopy type theory. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me all well. Um, so I'll talk about a, a novel syntactic approach to dealing with coherences in HOT uh, with the purpose of defining simplicial structures in the end. Um, so as, as context for the research project that uh, Samson and I are, are working on, um, as we try to look for some nice applications of what to, to bring formal reasoning more, in, more into the mathematical mainstream. Uh, Kevin Buzzard has already made the point in some talks that generic mathematicians tend to be not very interested in formal methods, and be that as it may, um, we think that at least one group of, of researchers in math uh, should be very keen on, on working in type theory. and uh, namely the ones that are interested in computational content of mathematics, since intuitionistic type theory uh, singles this, this out. Um, yeah, they, they should be convinced uh, that, that formal reasoning is actually beneficial for their work. Uh, in particular, uh, computational topology is a, is a good showcase for HOT, um, since HOT should bring all the necessary ingredients to, to talk nicely uh, about this part of, of mathematics. Um, so, for example, in discrete MOS theory, one, one main interest is the reduction of bigger simplicial complexes to smaller ones under preservation of homotopy type. Um, so here, for example, we have a two-dimensional simplicial complex, and with an algorithm, you can reduce it to just a single dot, uh, which has the same homotopy type. Um, and it should be possible to, to represent this neatly in, in HOT. Um, there has already been some, some nice work by Heras et al., we have uh, formalized some, some main results of persistent homology in COG, uh, and we, we kind of want to take this a bit further. Um, we want to try to, to formalize mathematics uh, in a way that is close to mathematical intuition, but since uh, we work in constructive type theory, um, the, the algorithms just kind of fall, fall out of our, our formalizations. Um, so it's not, not really programming. Um, what we do, but we do maths, and the computational content is uh, is characterized by the maths that we do in, in type theory. Um, now, the first thing we, we need to do when formalizing discrete MOS theory is, of course, uh, we need to have a nice definition of a simplicial complex, or more generally, a simplicial, simplicial structure. And uh, we can, of course, encode them in some way as lists of lists of integers, uh, and we have done that, um, but then working with this definition gets unwieldy pretty quickly. Um, so doing formalizations then more feels like programming than doing math. Uh, so that's kind of the, the angle from which we came at considering semi-simplicial types, uh, which is of course a, an open problem uh, in the HOP community for, for almost a decade now uh, to define semi-simplicial types. So shortly what, what they are is they, they try to directly capture uh, these simplicial structures um, in, in type theory. So we've seen a two-dimensional uh, complex on the, on the previous slide. And in general, a two-dimensional simplicial, uh, two simplicial or semi-simplicial complex um, will have vertices, so some type in the, in the universe um, in the zeroth dimension. Then we have uh, edges between two vertices in, in the first dimension, so this will be mapped to the unit type in case there is an edge between the two vertices in A0. Uh, we have triangle filters, so three points and edges between them are mapped to a unit type if there is a triangle filler in, in the complex, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And now the perhaps surprising thing is that it's not possible, or it appears to be not possible, to define uh, semi-simplicial types in general as a dependent type in, in HOT. So we cannot just uh, construct a type, same as individual type in book hot that given a natural number yields a n. And um, since simplicial structures are uh, also of interest in, in the semantics of type theory, um, this has been a, a core issue right from the beginning. And uh, various uh, variations to intentional type theory have been suggested um, that allow for, for defining semi-simplicial types. Um, there are experts in, in the audience here who, who know more about uh, two-level type theories, which builds on an idea of Wojewodzki, and on the other hand, uh, observational type theory, or more recently, XTT. Um, so I won't, won't dwell on these, but the, the essential idea there is that we need some extensional 
identity types somehow in, in our type theory to deal with coherences. Uh, and the, the purpose of this talk is to introduce another variation of intentional type theory, which might have beneficial uh, properties um, that also captures or allows for, for dealing with coherences. So the, this, this problem of coherences that pops up when defining semi-simplicial types is um, that kind of proof relevance is sometimes uh, yeah, stabbing us in the back. So proof relevance is of course what, what makes type theory so nice um, since we have proofs as first order objects in our theory. Uh, but at the same time, um, this makes us uh, or leads to new problems when, when we have to um, yeah, somehow structure these proofs. So for example, when we have some associativity law, we need to prove it. And then we might have different proofs of this uh, different uh, of this associativity, and then we have to somehow, um, yeah, set, show that these fit nicely together again. And when doing this for seamless and visual types in Bookot, uh, it appears that there is an infinite tower of coherences that need to be taken care of. Uh, so this appears to be not possible. Um, then, of course, when when talking about uh, extensionality and type theory, truncation comes into mind, since this is the the usual approach to to erasing computational content in type theory. Um, but in this case, this also doesn't come to the rescue, since uh, this works on a, on a propositional level. Um, but instead, we we somehow seem to need need something stronger. So, the the analysis uh, of the problem in, in our uh, account is that sometimes we actually want something like uniqueness of identity proofs or, or XMK, k And this is not just restricted to this level, but uh, also to, to other levels. So sometimes you might just want to have a proposition on a judgmental level, uh, where sometimes we really do want to talk about what higher paths. Um, so kind of as a slogan, uh, we appear to, to want an internal language for, for any group points. So under the, the premise that um, intentional type theory can be regarded as an internal language for omega group points. Um, yeah, this appears to be too much structure for, for many purposes. So our proposal is uh, finite dimensional type theory. Uh, it has three key ingredients, which I uh, sketch quickly. Um, so the, the main idea is that the, the main judgment of intentional type theory, that A is a type, is refined to A is an N type. So we don't have a truncation operation or something like this, but really a type is intrinsically uh, or has intrinsically a dimension. For now, this will just be a natural number in, in this talk. Uh, and we can introduce n types just with the usual type formers. So for example, the pi formation rule is um, parameterized by, by dimensions. So we can just uh, plug in any dimension that we want and then we have a two pi type, for example. Um, the other rules for pi and sigma types uh, remain standard. So for example, the introduction rule um, is just, yeah, depending on, on which, which pi type you want to construct here. But apart from that, not much changes. Uh, the second ingredient is that we need to refine the introduction rule for identity types. Um, so we said the, the central judgment is A is an n-type. Um, and if A is an n-type, then the identity type on A will be an n minus one type. So we decrease the dimension of the identity types uh, in each iteration uh, until we at some point reach zero. So that means that all identity types on an n type from the nth iteration on have dimension zero. So a two type has a one type as an identity type and the identity type on this type will have dimension zero. And then every identity type on this one has, ident uh, has dimension zero. So we still have an infinite tower of identity types uh, but with the, the last ingredient, we, we want to trivialize the zero types. So this suggests yet another numbering. We already have, have two numberings of the different levels uh, in, in type theory or in category theory or in homotopy theory. Um, so suggested by the way we build up the system, uh, in our system, the zero types will be the, the propositions. So the ones with unique inhabitants, but one types will be the sets. So these will have uh, unique ident uh, identity proofs uh, and then the two types are the one group points and so on. Um, now the last ingredient we need is we need to somehow make the, the zero types collapse. Uh, and for this, we, we propose axiom L, uh, which is inspired by Streicher's axiom K, hence, hence the name. 
Uh, and this is an eliminator for, for identity type, uh, for, for zero types. So we have, still have the J rule for identity types. So for identity types, really just the introduction rule changes. Um, but then we add a new eliminator, which uh, is for all, for all zero types. So given a zero type A, um, we want to construct a type C depending on A. And now XML states that we just need to show that C is inhabited for some A. So we can give any, any A we, we want. And then we can construct an inhabitant of C for some other B. So it's really, it doesn't matter kind of uh, which, for which inhabitant of the zero type we can construct something, then we get everything else for free. Um, and XML also comes with a computation rule. So if we plug in the element A here um, for which we have already constructed a proof uh, C, then we will retain this original proof C. Um, yeah, syntax is not very intuitive to look at. So we'll look at two admissible rules in finite dimensional type theory to, to get an intuition of what, what XML does. So the first thing we'll look at, so here's just as a reminder, XML on the top. Uh, we said we wanted kind of the zero types to behave as propositions. Um, and to see that this is the case, uh, we, we see that if we introduce the unit type as a zero type, uh, we don't have to state its elimination and computation rule because this just follows straightforwardly from, from XML. So we can instantiate XML for the unit type. And then if we construct a proof for, for the only inhabitant that is given by the introduction rule, then for other any other inhabitant of, of truth, uh, we also get an inhabitant. And the computation rule is also just standard, kind of. Um, now let's go one dimension up. We said that the, the one types uh, should behave like sets. So we want uh, unique identity proofs for, for the one types. And uh, this is indeed the case. So given two elements of a one type A, uh, we want to show that two proofs P and Q that A and B are equal are themselves equal. And to do this, uh, we look at the identity type on A, which is itself a zero type. Uh, then we look at the type C, which is just all the proofs that are equal to P. So R is a, is a free variable here. And um, now we just have to show that this type is inhabited for any, inhab any element of, uh, of this type. So we choose P for this one since the reflexivity of P um, always exists. So now we also get for Q a proof that these two uh, proofs are themselves equal. And uh, also a computation rule, of course, follows from, from XML. Um, so this hopefully gives some idea about XML. Now we want to see what it's actually like uh, working in, in finite dimensional type theory or short FTT. Um, so following uh, what Nikolai Kaus did in his PhD thesis, we will uh, construct the category delta plus, the category of uh, finite non-zero ordinals uh, internally in, in type theory. So um, I've not spelled out the definition of finite types and, and less than relation on finite types, which is just standard. Um, but you see that the finite types are one types. So these are really sets. So XMK kind of works for them. Uh, less than relation is a proposition. And um, now we can just do the construction that you can do in, in Bookhart as well. So we can construct a proposition increasing, which is a zero type since the pi type we use for uh, given inhabitant of, of, of this type um, has dimension zero. And this is just standard for all ij in the finite type. If they are less than, uh, if i is less than j, then it should also be the case after being mapped uh, to the target by f. Um, now, the, the first inter interesting thing that happens um, is that we can define the, the home set as a one type. So um, delta plus of m at n should be all the morphisms in delta plus um, that are strictly monotonally increasing functions. Um, and since we give a one as a superscript to, to the sigma type, uh, we'll have uh, the uniqueness of identity proofs for the home set. So this will not be a pre-category, but an actual category. Um, yeah. Uh, and then as uh, Nicolai Kaus observed, we can just define composition also component-wise. 
Um, this, this as a warm up, we now want to turn to semi simplicial types. For this, we need uh, a bit more uh, in our type theory, namely, we need universes. And now something nice happens if we just naively um, introduce universes in, in our theory. So, first we have encoding and decoding functions. So, if A is an n type, then we'll put it in the nth uh, level of, of, of the universe. So, we have a uh, stratified uh, hierarchy of universes. Um, but we can now read this as the, the nth universe really contains all the n dimensional types and all the types below. So it's, it's not only a, a technical level, but it's, it's actually a mathematically meaningful level since the dimensions have, have meaning for the types. Um, and then the, the introduction rule for universes, which states that the nth universe has itself level, or in this case, dimension n plus one. Um, this is actually internalizing the finding that uh, Nikolai Kraus and Christian Sattler have made for, for truncated type theory, in which um, they sh they've shown that the sub-universe U that only contains n truncated types is itself the first one, which has a, has a larger level. Um, so this kind of is a first reading of how finite dimensional type theory might also enlighten how we handle universes. Um, with that, we can attempt to define semi-simplicial types in our type theory. And the, the crucial bit really, so again, we uh, built on a construction which has been described in the context of two level type theories. Um, the, the crucial bit that we, we introduce is that uh, semi-simplicial types are one dimensional types um, in our understanding. So they are, are really sets. Um, and also the, the skeleton of a semi-simplicial type is a, is a one, one type, so a set. Um, and the, the construction from uh, Thorsten Altenkirch et al. Um, now works by defining uh, yeah, kind of a functor from um, the category delta plus into the universe, um, such that we get the skeleton and the skeleton of the appropriate dimension will then be the semi-simplicial type. So I didn't spell out the, the definitions here, um, but, but the types will suffice hopefully to get an idea. So this is the, the object part kind of of the functor. So for all number, which is below the dimension of the semi-simplicial type, uh, we get all the cells in the skeleton or the skeleton which contains all the cells below this K. Uh, and then we also have to, to map the morphisms in delta plus. So all these K1, K2, and given then the skeleton of K2, um, we also have to retrieve the, the skeleton of K1. And uh, since this is a functor, it should obey the functor law that if we map um, the composite of two functions in delta plus uh, into the universe, this should be the same as mapping both functions individually with this functor uh, skeleton uh, into the universe. And um, in, a, in a formalization in ACTA, uh, Nicolai Kaus has already pointed out that kind of when, when one constructs inhabitants of these types, um, that one crucial coherence pops up. So when, when giving an inhabitant of this type, um, one has to prove that it's also the case um, that this coherence holds for, for three functions. Um, but then in, in Bookhot, what goes wrong is that there are two proofs of, uh, of this identity and then these proofs again have to be identified, and this is kind of the Sisyphean task that that pops up in Bukot when trying to to construct semi-simplicial types. Um, but crucially, we have a zero type here because the skeleton is a one type; its identity type is a zero type. So we have, in a sense, axiom K for this this bit. Um, so the construction should go through. I say should because uh, we are still in uh, working on on this. Um, yeah, it's. It's a work in progress, but uh, essentially the, the insight is just that we have X and K for some types in our type theory. So hence it should work to define semi simplicial types. I'll, I'll wrap up. Um, so this is very early work in progress. Um, and there are many open questions as Carlo and Julie has pointed out, it's easier to devise a type theory than to establish its properties. So that's what we need to do next. Um, in particular, the, the motivation, kind of an internal language for n-group points um, if this is actually 
the case if FTT does capture this uh, is not clear to us at all. So this needs to be established. Um, and then, of course, the other approaches to, uh, to coherences will, will hopefully enlighten also our work. So we need to see what the exact connection is to truncated type theory in particular. Uh, and then the reason why we don't use XMK is that we want to have nice things. So we want to have univalence and higher inductive types. Um, and we need to see how, how this might work. Um, Zatla and Fuzuzi have, have shown that for intricated type theory, you can actually have partial forms of univalence. So this might uh, give insight for us. And also, sometimes we might not want uh, intricate or finite dimensional types, but instead uh, omega groupoidal types. And we could naively just uh, change the, the possible dimensions to also include omega as a dimension. Um, and a natural conjecture would then be that uh, we can also prove anything in FDT plus omega that we already were, were able to prove in Bukot, um, so that this theory is conservative. Yeah, uh, so this as a very first account of this type theory. Um, what, what the punchline really is, is that we think we, yeah, we need a better handling of, of uh, extensionality in, in HOT to, to make it practical uh, and to, to, in particular, have nice formalizations in, in computational topology. And uh, maybe FDT is, is one, one way to, to do this. Yeah. Thank you. And here are some references if you want to look them up. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. So I don't know exactly how I can check whether people are asking questions because I don't see the hands raised. Mike Schulman is raising his Mike hand. Schulman. Mike Schulman, okay. So, uh, can you speak, Mike? No. So, Mike, are you are you with us? Yes, yes, you are with How us. How about now? <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. So please. Can you hear me? Yes, we we can hear you. So can you? Yes, yes. We can. Can you, can you hear us? No, I can't hear you. Ah. All right, I give up. <laughs> Or maybe you could post a oh, question. Oh no! Then, there the we chat. there we go. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my, my Zoom settings were all weird. <laughs> so sorry. Um, okay. So I, I have a I have a plea and a question. Uh, my plea is to please, please, please don't introduce a new numbering system. It's so <laughs> confusing already. Just just start at minus one <laughs> instead of starting at zero. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and my, my question is, I don't um, I don't quite understand what you're achieving here. So. I like just to compare in in book hot we can define the type of semi simplicial sets uh, with with that because we can if we limit the 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 homotopy level of the types occurring in a semi simplicial diagram and in two level type theory we can define semi simplicial types by using the stricter equality so so what's what ex what sort of thing are you doing here are you do are you have a stricter equality on higher types that allows you to define Simplicial higher types, or are you restricting the level of the simplicial types themselves? Uh, so let me get that straight. In Bukot, uh, semi simplicial sets, so kind of one truncated semi simplicial types already work well. Zero truncated, yes. Uh, zero truncated, yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, Okay, this, this, this works already. I, I haven't checked that. Uh, I assume. Well, that, it, that it's, was it's not. not it's, it's not doing it exactly the same way, but you could just, just have a category of of sets, and so you define functors from this thing to the category of sets, and the trunk yeah. the, the coherence bottoms out at the top. The and the, the purpose of uh, semi simplicial types then uh, would be to to have actually higher homotopical information inside these mm -hmm. types. Okay, yeah. so we we actually do want them to not be truncated. Is that correct? Well, that that's the that's the problem that isn't solved yet. In, in, is to or the the one that two level type theory solves. 
Yeah. It can serve yeah, different guess, purposes. Yeah, I guess uh, this this problem is then not not solved by by our type theory. Um, so I guess it kind of depends on, on from which direction you, you look at it. Uh, so for higher categorical investigations, uh, this might not actually be, be so helpful, um, but kind of from having a, yeah, a robust notion of uh, simplicial structure to, to formalize some things in computational topology, that was kind of the, the angle that we looked at it. Um, and there are two level type theory uh, also has the issue that it's not really a, a practical type theory in my understanding. Um, yeah, so, so I guess the, the idea is to, to have a practical yeah, notion of, of extensionality. And also truncation comes with some, um, some caveats, in my understanding, or some things that I at least don't understand. So for example, Nikolai Kaur's magic trick is something that is a bit off-putting uh, or that I found confusing. Um, and the hope would be maybe that this is kind of a judgmental uh, version of, of truncated type theory that doesn't come with these peculiarities. So your, your semi-simplicial types are, are actually semi-simplicial sets. They are, they are truncated. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So maybe I'm, I don't see any other questions and I think uh, we should probably have a three minutes break to make sure that the next talk is in time. So let's, let's uh, thank you again. And um, 